right, friends and neighbors, we've been talking a lot about some quality of service issues. We've been talking about the IP type of service field and some of the things that can happen. Let's close it all up with some configuration examples and an actual application of cost, toss, and DSCP values. All right, to get us started, the two standards that generally come into the conversation when you're talking about policies that you might apply on a router or standards that you might put in place to make sure that you've got the quality of service that you want or the quality of experience for applications are integrated services and differentiated services. Now we're going to talk a lot about differentiated services. That's provision costs where you tell the routers what to do. Integrated services we don't see as much and that's what we call signaled quas. And what ends up happening there is that devices signal into the network, usually some, with something like resource reservation protocol, and ask the network for some additional handling, bandwidth uh, constraints, something of that sort. And if the network has the ability, the services are provided. But what it does is it creates a lot of state on the routers to remember. And so most, most configurations that, at least that I've seen so far, are going to be based on differentiated services where the router is actually provisioned, given a static set of policies, and that's that's what happens on the on the router. So RFC 2474 is differentiated services. And what we're talking about here is that type of service field in the IP header, but we're going to change its use a little bit. So what ends up happening is that packets entering the network get flagged. And the values that we're going to the, the values that we're going to flag them with go in that type of service field. But again, it's not called type of service anymore. And a lot of times, what we're also going to do is marry what's happening at layer two uh, on up to layer three. Okay, so we're going to extend the 802.1Q priority field into layer three. Now, a long time ago, that 802.1Q priority field was actually called 802.1P, uh, and the differentiated services RFC obsoletes all the stuff that went on before. So what is differentiated services? It's a protocol for specifying and controlling network traffic by class. So certain types of traffic get precedence. Now you can go the other way too. You can also say I want this kind of traffic to get no precedent or be really really low is on the priority list. Now there are 64 possible DSCP values, and we'll see how we structure them here in a second. But you can see down at the bottom, there's this one byte field again. But instead of using the field for type of service, what we're going to do is describe the differentiated services code point values that go in those six bits of the eight. And the CU field is currently unused. Now, currently unused means that at the time that 2474 was written, they weren't used because they were only specifying the 64 possible values. Now these 64 possible values also have some basic configurations or what we call per hop behaviors that we'll talk about here in a minute. So here's how they're broken up and this separation becomes important to us. That 0, 1, 2 or the first three bits of the field actually come from that 802.1Q priority mapping. So we'll just have to remember that. And then we can manipulate bits 3, 4, and 5 also. 6 and 7, of course, are the currently unused ones. So manipulating these bits also gives us an ability to create our own unique DSCP values and therefore our own unique policies, but it also allows us to implement the per hop behaviors that we'll describe here, like I said, in a minute. So the type of service and the DSCP bits occupy that same space in the IP header, but they're not doing the same thing. The, it's a different sort of use for the bits. And by that I mean that the IP RFC described a very particular way that they were lined up, that the way the type of service field was handled. We're going to take some of that and use that for the DSCP values, but then the DSCP values will sort of depart from the way the type of service field was used. So some related RFCs to, to differentiated services. There's the architecture RFC. It's a good one to remember. Now the currently unused bits were changed in RFC 3168 to add the explicit congestion notification 
to IP. And so that means now that TCP senders can actually make use of the explicit congestion notification field. So TCP can now be aware of what's happening in the, in the IP header. Now that's kind of fun because previous protocols like Frame Relay actually made use of congestion notification. We actually had a forward congestion notification and a backward congestion notification depending on which traffic, which way your traffic was flowing. So this is an extension of those ideas, although obviously the implementation is a little different. Then there were some clarifications for DiffServ, RFC 3260, and then later on we had an actual registry for the uh, per hop behaviors and the DiffServ code point values. Just like IP addresses are registered, we have now a registry for, for DiffServ. Here is an important idea. The thing that I'm going to talk about in this particular video is taking layer 2 stuff and mapping it to layer 3 stuff. So what we're going to do is take that 802.1Q priority, what's known as class of service, and we're going to map that to a layer 3 DSCP value. On the switch that does that, there's usually a set of maps that show you what you can use. Now you can see these are a couple of examples of how you might map in one direction or the other, or you can use different types of mapping. What I'm elected to use here is class of service to DSCP, which is what we've been talking about. It's a very common way of doing these particular mappings. And it shows you that if you have, for example, a class of service of 1, that gets mapped to a DSCP value of 8, and 7 goes to 56, and so on and so forth. So this is just the output of show MLS QOS maps on a Cisco switch. Now these are just some examples, they're not exactly tied to each other. On the bottom, we can see our layer two a class of service. We're used to seeing that VLAN ID, in this case 101. It's just VLAN 101. Right above that, I've highlighted the 111, or the priority field for 802.1Q. Now, it's all the way on the left side of that, that set of octets, and you might be very tempted to try to calculate the value, but don't. Those values are sort of all by themselves. So it's three bits, so the values for that particular field range from 0 to 7. And so those eight possible values get mapped to the thing that I've highlighted up above into the differentiated services field. And so while this isn't an exact mapping that shows you how you can set the differentiated services field either manually or based on what your switch wanted to do using the the cost to DSCP map that I showed you earlier. Now, the thing that you usually see in regular packet capture is that the differentiated services field is set to zero. Now, I just sort of expanded that 802.1Q header, and I just wanted to point out, just sort of emphasize that those three bits are really, really important to us because those three bits get mapped to the first three bits of our DSCP value, so they become really, really important. Now, per hop behaviors. There is a standard collection of per hop behaviors that routers can use. And these are based on certain kinds of traffic that you might experience. So if we jump down to the bottom there, we'll get started right away. So the default is all zero. So that's one per hop behavior. Now another per hop behavior is using the class selector bits. The class selector bits are the first three bits in the IP header DSCP field. Those happen to correspond directly to the 802.1Q priority. So when you use the direct mapping, you're using a class selector bit. This is backward compatible with the IP precedence that was also the first three bits in the IP type of service field. And then we've got expedited forwarding. So if you just put that value in there for the DSCP value, we know that this is an expedited forwarding uh, per hop behavior. And then we've got assured forwarding. Now we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that because you can set up the policies that have different values for a, a different collection of classes. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Now, as we said, differentiated services is what we call provision cloth, provision quas. So you set up classes on a router, they're static, and the router decides what to do based on those policies. 
This is as opposed to integrated services, which is the signaled quas that we mentioned early at the beginning of this video. And signaled quas is different because, again, the hosts are asking for some kind of treatment for their particular traffic at the time that the traffic is being generated. Here's how we get started on actually configuring this on a router. The first thing that we're going to do is define a class map. And this is where we're going to identify and label the traffic. You pick a type of traffic and you say, this particular kind of traffic is going to get this DSCP value. And so you have this sort of matching criteria. Now matching criteria can come from all over the place. We're talking about DSCP, but ACLs, IP type of service, there's all kinds of ways to identify traffic and then use that as a map to, or use that as a match for your class map. And then of course you can create multiple class maps on a router. Now the policy map references the class map. And the, so the policy map says, okay, I see you've got these classes defined in your class map. Here's the treatment that each class is going to get. So that's step two. So we identify the traffic, we classify it, we label it in some way, and then we have a policy or a policer that says, this is what I'm going to do with this particular traffic. And all that's great, but we're still not doing anything yet. The service policy now says, I want you to apply that particular treatment on an interface and a direction. And so that's our last step. That is where we're actually going to take action. So there's this wonderful little graphic out of the Cisco site that says, sort of shows you the conveyor belt that traffic goes through as it hits an interface or a series of interfaces, maybe that goes into and that goes out on the router or that goes into and that goes out on a particular interface. So you're going to classify the traffic. You're going to organize the traffic by label or no label. You're going to then organize and decide what you're going to do with all the traffic that you're going to, um, that you've had classified. And then you line it up into its, its policies, then decide what you're going to do with it. And you, at this point, you're actually controlling what's happening, say, in bandwidth or in the queuing strategy. If you have a congestion avoidance mechanism, like um, a, a weighted tail drop or random early detection, something of that sort, that's where you're handling congestion or you're addressing congestion. And then you've got the scheduling and services of the queues. So that just sort of shows you the uh, conveyor belt that the interfaces or traffic is on. Here's an actual configuration example. On the left-hand side, we've got the switch. And so I outputted the particular map that I'm going to use. I enabled QOS with the MLS QOS command. And then on whatever interface that you have, so there's our VLAN 101 from the earlier capture. Uh, and I've just said this particular interface on this particular VLAN is going to get a cost value of 7. And we remember that from the map as being mapped to 56. And then we say, Quas trust cost, and so that allows the mapping to happen. And then here's just a couple of reminders. Every once in a while, you'll see in commands things like CS1, CS2, and these are uh, particular mappings to uh, DSCP values. So I just gave you a couple of examples there. Sometimes it's not as clear when when you have the numbers, and then they say, "Oh, here's this other way to reference these values, CS1 through CS7." So um, that's just what the numbers mean when you see that. Okay, here is a couple of class map examples. I've given a gold and a lead class and decided to map on these DSCP values that you see in the bottom left. So that is the labeling. That is the classification that I want to use. And then in the policy map, we see that I've identified the lead class the kind of lousy service class is having 1% of the bandwidth. And the gold class, I've given 74% of the bandwidth to that one. Okay, still not happening though, still not doing anything until we go down to, say, a serial interface like a T carrier or, you know, any other interface, and then apply the service policy in a particular direction. And that puts the whole thing together. All right, so let's just do a little bit more on integrated services. There's the RFC. It is what we call fine-grained or signaled quas. And again, 
the nodes are going to signal into the network what they like. Now, if you want an end-to-end -end solution and you're doing differentiated services, that means that all of the routers have to have the same policy provisioned on them. Same thing here. If you have one router that's willing to accept resource reservation protocol messages and the rest of the routers don't, well, the QOS begins and ends right there. So individual applications or individual nodes, say the president versus the worker bees, might actually be able to request different resources, different applications, different types of traffic. VoIP versus FTP is the example that I like to use. Uh, and then the network tries to give them a guarantee. But of course, in the minute we have congestion or there are problems, those guarantees go right out the window. The, and the problem that I alluded to earlier is that there are many, many states on each router. So let's think about this for a sec. You have provisioned quas and provisioned quas you just have the class maps, policy maps, and the service policies on the router. That's it. That's what you have. Those are the states that the router knows about. But if, what if you have a, a thousand nodes or just VoIP phones? You know, so everybody's got a VoIP phone on their desk, and all of those phones try to signal into the network what they want for quality of service provisioning. Now the router has to remember all of those states for every one of those nodes, and each node might have more than one. So think instead of a VoIP phone, what if you have a VoIP application and then some other application on that node that also requires provisioning? So that's one of the, that's the big problem with integrated services. Now, if you really start to tear into networking, you realize that flows are very important. Keeping track or understanding what flows are present on the network is really what we base our routing on. It's really what we base firewalling on, trying to understand the sources and destinations that are in play at any one particular time. Now the general definition of a flow is traffic having the same source and destination IP address, sometimes the same uh, source and destination port, but certainly traffic all heading between one source and one destination. It's important to realize that flows are also unidirectional. So two nodes talking to each other would actually be constituting two flows, one in each direction. Okay, when we start talking about quality of service, we identify those same flows, but then we say those flows all have the same provisioning or same level of quality of service. So that's one of the important distinctions that we'll make since we're talking about policies that might be present on a router. And then we've got flow specifications that are present, certainly in integrated services, where you're trying to identify traffic of different types. So best effort here, I hope this gets there, rate sensitive and delay sensitive. So uh, certainly the delay sensitive is very straightforward. You want a low latency connection. Rate sensitive is where we want a particular uh, performance because we're expecting a particular quality. Latency helps and is certainly a big part of the picture there. If we're affected by other network problems like jitter where we're having you know, unusual or fluctuations in performance, we might want to try a rate sensitive flow spec. Now, before we go, even if you never use InServe or RSVP, you're never worried about your flow specs, you're not done with flows. We have SDN with open flow protocol. And even though that's not as big as some folks hoped, uh, you have flow tables that decide where traffic goes uh, inside specifications like open vSwitch. Protocols like NetFlow are very, very concerned with flows and in fact send flow data to the flow collector. So flows are a really, really important idea in networking today. Well, thanks for watching. This has been a chat about differentiated services and an actual policy implementation with the policy map and the class map and the service policies. And then we get to see an actual mapping of the 802.1Q priority to a layer three differentiated services code point. Like and subscribe if I helped. And until next time, may your packets always reach their destinations.